as we stated, this is pretty much a uh, casual thing. We're going to drill into you question after question, like uh, <laughs> rapid fire. What are your favorite social security numbers? <laughs> yeah, I can put me on the spot and try to extract canceling blackmail or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the whole point of this podcast is getting dirt yeah. on big uh, people in the pony fandom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Little Shy, if you don't mind, could you tell me the numbers on the front of your credit card, the name, the date, and then the wacky three numbers on the back? Yeah, those magical three numbers in the back. Yeah, see, I need those. That's actually like the, the code to uh, to open the portal to Equestria so everyone can go through. I just <laughs> I just need you to supply that information. Yeah, yeah. Who, who could say no to that? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Out of Our Mains, the show where we're out of our mains, and you probably are too, because you're listening to some hopeless, colorful horse addicts ramble on about a show meant for little girls. I'm Maynard, and we've got Ambazar here today. Hello. You cut out every single time. Wait, did it cut out again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell to Electric Boogaloop. I swear I didn't do that on purpose. And Robert's here too. Hello, yes, I am the red one. And we also have special guest, uh, Little Shy FIM. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. He is also the red one. Yeah, we got two red on the show. He's another red one. Okay, red with brown manes. Like, we gotta form a club. I think we made fun of Robert in the past for looking like uh, Little Shy's OC. <laughs> so this is pretty <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, you can't tell him apart. Yeah, the same I, character. I, I stole your OC. So yeah, Robert, we're actually going to have to kick you off the show for uh, identity theft. Aww. I just noticed um, I'm outnumbered by horned horses here. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a it's a running joke. Uh, one of our frequent viewers likes to call it the horn bias. Um, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, we take Unicorn Master Race to a new level. All you need a horn and then you'll be part of the group. You'll also be an alicorn. I was going to say, I'm not giving up the wings, I'll just become an alicorn. Yeah, yeah just, just oh, become there the next go. princess. I was literally about to say if uh, Robert and Little Shy like fuse, they'd make an alicorn. <laughs> Yo, there we go. Yeah. So Little Shy, since you've joined us today, uh, in case anybody hasn't heard of your channel, which I'd, I'd honestly be surprised if anyone listening hasn't. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about like what you do on your YouTube channel? Like, what do you what do you do for the Brony fandom? In your words, yeah, I do uh, a few different things on YouTube. Uh, the big one is Cinema Sins, kind of a rip off of Cinema Sins, where I kind of nitpick episodes in a hopefully humorous way. Uh, I run the Top Ten Pony videos, which is a long running series for well over a decade now. Uh, I make miscellaneous other videos talking about issues and sketches, and you know, I, I get you could almost call them video essays sometimes, but I don't know, it's not really that. Not, not really the focus there, but and then I do lots of stuff outside of YouTube. I run a couple Discord servers. Uh, I run whatisabrony.com, for example, stuff like that. So you've got a lot going on. You kind of uh, have dipped your toes in uh, in various different uh, types of media. A horse of many hats. H how long about have you uh, have you been making content for like the uh, for the Brony fandom? Yeah, so let me think. I mean, I made my YouTube channel. Um, was it? I think it was yeah, 2012. I think it was the beginning of 2012. I made my YouTube channel. Uh, and you know, early on, I was making like pony in real life stuff, kind of like combining live action footage with animation, and and th then I kind of broke out into the the, the Cinemarison stuff and started making other, I guess you, again you could call it essay style videos, stuff like that. So yeah, yeah it, I mean, it's been like eleven years or so, more than that maybe. Wow. wow, you've been you've been around for year like around like the prime of YouTube then. Yeah, yeah. Well, you both YouTube and like you know the peak meme dumb of the fandom as well. So oh, I've, I've lived through the the highs and the lows, you know. Yeah, oh the golden age. <laughs> Did you also get into the fandom around the same time, like around 2012? Yeah, I, I've been trying to pan it down for years, going through like old Google takeouts and like old archives of my stuff, trying to figure out like when did I actually discover ponies, and I I've it pinned down to about November of 2011. I first found okay. the show and. uh found an old non-pony video where I put a pony reference in it on an older channel, so that kind of tells me, oh, okay, so I was into it enough to start referencing it in videos, so, so yeah, around that time. Okay, do you know, like, how you got into it exactly? Yeah, I think it mainly just started as um, a curiosity and, like, the memes and, and funny stuff like that, and <laughs> just, just seeing everyone talking about this, this weird cartoon, and then, obviously, it led to me watching it and actually taking a genuine interest and in loving the characters and the world that they were set in and all that. And then discovering the the community and joining my back in the day, I joined a forum. That's how you know uh, I've been around oh, over yeah. a decade. But <laughs> there you go. back in the day, yep. Back when people used forums. So you said you made your YouTube channel around uh, 2012. So like, uh, was Pony what like got you interested in making stuff, or did you have any like experience with like uh, video editing or like uh, uh, like content uh, making scripting? In general? 
Yeah, that sort of thing. I couldn't tell you exactly why, but I've always had a passion for video making in general ever since very early childhood. Like before I could form memories, I was just picking up my dad's VHS camera and, you know, <laughs> shooting shooting videos with the kids around the, the neighborhood and stuff like that long oh, before awesome. YouTube existed. Mm. Yeah. And then I discovered YouTube. I'm like, oh, okay, I got I to gotta use this website. And, uh, you know, it's all coming together. Yeah, right. Like, no, I, I I remembered the day I discovered YouTube. I was, you know, like a small child. <laughs> it's like this wonderful thing exists on the internet. They let you upload any video you want on there. You don't have to pay for it. It's amazing. This wonderful thing he says with childlike <laughs> innocence. <laughs> well, I was a child. Yeah, it was it was it was a magical time back then. It was the Wild West. Yeah, it was very different <laughs> from where it is today. <laughs> very um, different. Yeah, I like uh, I like seeing uh, like the screenshots of how like old YouTube, like especially like post 2010 was laid out. I mean, I mean, you can look at it on the Wayback Machine. Yeah, like see all those like those. And old, I have uh, and it's just um, it's a blast from the past because I, I started watching YouTube when I was really young as well. <laughs> Be sure to click yeah. the yellow subscribe button and rate this five stars. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh. The stars. Click on the annotation in the top left to see the next that. video. We'll leave, a, leave a video reply. Oh, a video, video reply. reply. Remember those two. Oh, don't remind. That was an awful era. <laughs> I actually tried to record a video reply once, but then I couldn't figure out how to upload it because I was like nine. <laughs> yeah. Man, I think, I think I didn't get into YouTube until after that was like already gone. Because uh, yeah. I don't remember that at all. <gasps> oh no! Oh shoot! Y'all are gonna hate me. What? Y'all see the stream? Y'all see something yeah. wrong with this stream? It's like a Where's Waldo type deal. <laughs> um. Oh, so oh, you guys can't see the entirety of OBS. I didn't hit record. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Vader! I am so sorry. We were recording. Out, okay, we still have, we still have the audio, so <laughs> you can you can fix that. All or right. We can yeah. Just continue I'll... on. Oh gosh. Okay, I'll figure something out in post. You have to manually edit the the flashing screen avatars yourself. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, that would take ages. Dude, Maynard, you that's never happened. Uh, like Yeah, uh, I'm about to say that's never happened since I've been a part of this. Little Shy, you just got me so starstruck. I've been watching you since I was little, you know? I'm just bad luck. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll figure something out in post. But that um, is that is actually hilarious. <laughs> Our audiences don't come here for professionalism, so, you know. <laughs> At least I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you are, you're in the wrong place. Go to Little Shy's channel. <laughs> it blows my mind how much, like, how much influence the fandom had back in the day. Because, yeah, I didn't join until around, like, late 2014, early 2015. Same. And so by then, like, uh, a lot of people were, like, a lot of people had left the fandom. It wasn't as, like, pop culture as it was because of uh, just various things like the uh, the hiatus between season three and four, between four and five, uh, Twilight becoming an alicorn, literally like splitting the fandom. You know, everyone everyone talks about like the the fandom in the golden days, and it was like this huge deal. But th there's also something to be said about uh, like where we are now today. It's more tightly knit. It's not yeah. as oh, much of a meme as it is like a community. Oh yeah, so, yeah. As much as even I miss the good old, good old days, I'm. I still see pony avatars all the time in the comments of every website I go to. It's actually kind of mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, things in this community, it feels more organized, I guess. You you really feel it when you go to, like, a convention and such, because there are a lot more, like, I've looked at videos of, like, old conventions and stuff, and, like, it seems like conventions nowadays are a lot more, like, uh, uh, like you said, like, tightly knit, but, like, also relatively, like, professionally done. Um, as professional as you can get with, uh, with colorful of, talking horses, yeah. but yeah. They, they've certainly had a bit of time to nail it down. <laughs> oh, definitely. We've learned a lot since Unicon. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I've uh, watched plenty of uh, video essays of that. <laughs> Did you? Were you a part of that at all, or no? No, but I was at home following it the whole the whole live experience with Everfree Network and all that. So I, I wasn't there, but like I feel like I was because I followed it so closely. <laughs> yeah. I never experienced that either. I, I'd never even like. Uh, I don't know much about it to be honest. Oh my gosh! I gotta send you a couple videos to watch, Robert. It you, yeah, is. You know, I, I am actually Rob. curious. Even just races vlog, AC race bets, uh, AC race bets yes. the vlog where yes. oh, it, you yeah. know, it starts off like yeah. a normal convention trip, but then it like ends in disaster. It's hilarious. 
it's so <laughs> funny looking back at that, like with the hindsight of what the convention is. Like, because I started watching those vlogs and seeing, um, ah, who was it? Who was it? someone was begging a uh, race to come to the convention? He's like, "Come <laughs> on, man! It's gonna be great! It's gonna be an awesome time!" And just seeing that, and I'm like, "Oh no, they don't know." <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's the first thing we need to correct when the time machine is built. Go back and correct Unicon. Prevent yeah. everyone from attending. Do we fix the convention or do we just like, <laughs> like or do we people. just tell everyone no, don't yeah. do it? The big thing I remember from Unicon is just everybody being so panicked over like the implications for the rest of the fandom and the rest oh, of yeah. the conventions. Oh, yeah. That was huge. I mean, yeah, there are people literally saying it's like we're never gonna have conventions again. They're never gonna let voice actors go back. And it was just and like we just started. Yeah. Like we it, it can't be going down the tubes like this already. That was like right when I came into the fandom, I think. And then it was like um, it was Unicon, and then right before or after that, it was Twilight getting her wings. Everybody's like, oh, yep, show over. <laughs> and I'm like, I just got here. Y'all need to slow down. Felt like the community was already having those issues. But, but really, in hindsight, they were just growing pains. Like, that. that's, that's still early fandom now. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Fandoms, especially in the early days, they, they're a lot more, um, how do I put it, um, inexperienced. Dramatic. And like, they, they don't know how to handle things in the community yet, so you get you get crap like that all the time because of it i mean when you get an explosion of people suddenly like desperate for uh like connection with other people interested in the one thing they're desperate for connection content whether like canon or not canon um just in general like it gets really disorganized really quickly but that's also the time when you get like a bunch of uh uh when you get like the most uh creativity and such yeah. because like especially like there's still there's still a ton of stuff like this fandom i think is fairly unique in the amount of fan content that's still going on like years after the show actually ended but like especially in the early days like it was just you couldn't you couldn't take three steps without seeing some pony parody it was or... like uh it was like a double-edged sword i guess yeah uh, that's how I feel about it, at least. I'm sure, Little Shy, I'm sure you know all about uh, the fan content that's still coming out these days, considering you run top 10 pony videos. Yeah, I mean, I follow the videos pretty closely, but there's so many other areas of the fandom that I still have, like, after all these years, I have, like, no interaction with, and I just know, like, they're there, and they're doing stuff, like fan fiction. I've never really gotten into fan fiction, but that's still a big, strong thing, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah just, just seeing all the videos coming out on a monthly basis is great. Yeah, the fact that fan fiction is still a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's still getting stories, like, all the time. Uh, speaking of, like, all the content, like, nowadays, maybe I have, like, maybe there's, like, a bias in my head. Since this podcast started, like, a couple years ago or so, I feel like since doing the podcast, maybe it's been like this for a long time, but I feel like a bunch of new creators popped up around, like, when, when like, a new generation uh, popped up. Uh, when that movie came out, I felt like there was kind of like an influx of new, like, new pony creators and such. Do you like, do you agree with that? Or do you think there were like just as many like still popping up uh, before that? I think uh, roughly since 2016 or so in general, it's been pretty level, except with the big exception of people, you know, people eager to talk about the, the new generation and all that. So yeah, there, there's been more like, more like analysis and, and like a uh, discussion about stuff like that. Uh, I, I think there's always been new people coming and going throughout the years, and, and that's a good sign of a healthy community, I think. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think in my eyes, it seemed like, oh my gosh, there's all these, like, all these new creators coming out of nowhere recently, um, but that might just be because, like, <laughs> because I've been more closely following the fandom, because, like, I'm making stuff, like, I want to see who else is making stuff. And Yeah, you're probably onto something there. There's also YouTube recommended pushing, like, that content if you're into that content, you know? You start to notice people that you never knew were making content. Well, okay, I I wish it was like I wish it was better about that, about showing me new people in the fandom because I usually like nowadays like I usually meet someone before I like see anything about their like content coming out. Um it just feels like uh yeah, YouTube hasn't been like pushing those out for me. Maybe it's just maybe it's just because I'm not seeking uh that sort of stuff out. Welcome to YouTube, man. It's always like this. <laughs> oh man, don't get me going about the algorithm. <laughs> oh my god, don't even. That that's a yeah. whole other can of worms. <laughs> no, but it is great we have communities like on Discord and you know other social media where, where oh, yeah. we can yeah, reach definitely. out and meet, meet those kind of people. Definitely. On the topic of YouTube, uh kind of the whole reason I uh, reached out to you cuz um like 
I had honestly wanted to get you on the podcast for a bit. Yeah, when the uh, when the YouTube Kids video uh, came out that you made, because you've recently made like a video just detailing all your thoughts on uh, like the whole debacle that's hitting uh, animation focused content on YouTube with uh, things getting marked for kids like. We've talked a little bit about that on this podcast, but that was season one uh, of this podcast. This so uh, now, now this is season two. We get to talk about it again. I figure, I figure you might have a bit to say about it because I definitely have a lot to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I guess it was at least a couple of years ago, probably when the the whole issue was pretty recent. I started writing a script to like rant about this thing, and I, I never finished the script because so many of the issues felt like a. A temporary patch solution, like oh, okay, you know, this is an obvious problem. They're gonna they're gonna get better in time. They're gonna they're gonna train the AI better. They're gonna uh, they're gonna refine the appeal. No, they they didn't they didn't improve anything really for the most part. If anything, it's gotten worse over time. Of just blatant flagging anything that is remotely re- related to kids, as in cartoons. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the current situation is a little bit sad and depressing. Like, there's not much we can do except just kind of try to form com- communities outside of youtube you know try to try to uh, find other people on our own on out of our own will as opposed to just relying on relying on the algorithm to deliver those videos and obviously we can't leave comments on some videos so we gotta try to, to try to have that engagement elsewhere so yeah it's, it's kind of a mess right now yeah it just sucks that we have to like go through all these loopholes like i know people like tried are like because every single one of uh, their videos gets marked as for kids basically so they have to like make a community post on youtube and be like reply to this for the comment section for this video i commend that <sighs> kind of creativity and, and like trying to work around it it takes effort but like you know oh, it's good on them yeah yeah i just wish we didn't have to do stuff like that it's just it it sucks <laughs> Uh, yeah. I I first like started really paying attention to the four kids thing when um uh I think it was uh, Minty Roots uh oh, missing yeah. out video. That's atrocious. Uh, that I got that I got hit. I mean, yeah, like when that one got hit, I feel like that was one of the like first times that I saw a bunch of people like freaking out about like about this whole thing. Uh, and then like more recently, uh, Prince's, uh, solidarity video, yeah, like that got hit. Like those are two big ones where there's like no excuse. Cause you get something like a tri video, which does rely heavily on footage from the show. Y- it, you get into that gray area where YouTube does have to flag things as for kids if it's going to attract a children audience. And like maybe a lot of tri videos are just focused on clips from the show and they, they kind of, their their hand is kind of forced like you you can kind of explain it away right but then you get an animation that's like obviously a work of art like Minty Rude yeah. or or you know the Prince whatever stuff and it's just like like nobody nobody at YouTube seems to really care about that sort of thing yeah it it just sucks in in Minty's situation like that was an animation that was worked on I I want to say for well over a year yeah uh, if not more and like that by itself is just a shame that it got its like views gutted but in the in the solidarity video like that got marked as for kids way after being uploaded so there were so many like yeah heartfelt comments uh and just so many things that just got essentially like avengers endgame thanos oh, snapped gosh, out of existence yeah. like no it's worse than thanos snapped it wasn't just like half of them it was all of them yeah and, and gone. like unlike a lot of youtube issues where like there's like a chance of youtube trying to fix it as with the case with children's privacy laws, if they suspect those comments were made by kids, they're legally required to delete them all. There's no backups, there's no archives of those comments, on YouTube at least, and they're just yeah. gone forever. Like, the, I, like I, I could get behind the idea of YouTube kids, to be honest, but the bots in YouTube are just some of the worst bots I've ever seen. Well, it's not even a problem with the bots. Their bots are actually really advanced and kind of impressive from impressive from a technical standpoint. That the problem is that they thought bots could solve this problem in the first place. That that human decision was the biggest mistake here. It's cuz of like again, I don't doubt the bots are like, you know, very advanced. But like a, a platform like YouTube is something that you can't really like have rely on bots to moderate. Well, well, I mean, but yeah, bots can certainly help with moderation. Yeah, it, it but definitely helps, but they're relying on it. That's what I'm saying. Something as nuanced as like whether or not a video is primarily direct, primarily directed at children, is is like no way a bot can make that decision on on these very, uh, very, very complicated issues. Yeah, um, because like YouTube, there's there's a lot of content. There's like dozens, hundreds, maybe millions of videos uploading uploaded every minute, essentially, and like. 
bots can help flag it, but ultimately we need, like, human decision to decide whether this video is actually for kids or not, and we just don't have that, it feels. <laughs> I feel like one of my biggest, like, gripes with it, too, is just, uh, like, YouTube, essentially, like, I can't say definitively that they're lying about everything, but, um, like, saying that there is, like, human, uh, intervention with, <laughs> uh, with things. When you look at, like, when you look at Twitter, um, they have their, like, their official, uh, uh I forget what the, the Twitter is called, it's the YouTube support. They give their, like, uh, someone sends a tweet, they're like, hey, this massive animation is not, like, it was not made for kids, like, it was, um, uh, it was All the like support, a yeah. love effort. Yeah. And then support replies with like a slightly like poorly grammatically written comment. <laughs> um, and like it, which is supposed and like it's all in lowercase and it's like, OK, yeah, that's supposed to mean that like there's a person behind it. And then you look at their actual thing, you look at their tweets and replies and like they're just copy pasted. And it's like, there's no way there's a person doing well, that. That's the thing. It's actually on technicality they get by. It, it is a person. It is manually done. It's just like done in a call center on the other side of the world from someone who may not even have English as a first language, who doesn't understand our culture and what we consider for kids. Like, it's a totally different different thing. But I, I, if I can, I have a quick story about that whole manual review thing. I, oh, I had, yeah. a, I had a, a friend YouTuber who made a video where it got flagged. It got Well, it got demonetized, so different than YouTube kids, but s still automated systems yeah. involved. It got, it got demonetized for using a very offensive slur. And they're like, wait a minute, I, I don't use that kind of language in my videos. And if you look in the captions, you'll see that it thought they said a, oh. a very, very bad word, oh, yeah, but they didn't I actually say it. This. Yeah, well, they go to appeal it, and the appeal is rejected because the, this human reviewer, which is a real person, looked at the captions, said, oh, you can't say that word, that's why it's demonetized. They, they didn't take the five seconds to actually listen to the video. They just... They just it's, they call it a human review, even if the human reviewer is just looking at what the robot said. It's I don't know if you can call that a human reviewer or not. It's mm -hmm. it's so absurd. It's so like ugh, it feels so underhanded. Like it just it, it just feels gross. Yeah, because if if they took the time to have the appeal process, they they should just have that human reviewer actually listen to the five seconds of that video and and determine that. Uh, and I, I imagine that also comes into play a lot with the YouTube kids stuff. They probably have machine learning that gives certain percentages to stuff like, oh, the visuals are like 51% uh, bright and colorful for kids. The audio is 51% uh, bright and happy for kids. Like, you know, they probably look through these values that the, the computer provides the human reviewers. And then the human reviewer doesn't really have to take in all that context and uh, cultural importance. It just kind of does whatever the robot says, I'm, I'm guessing. It's just such a shame. Like, you see, like, uh, uh, I think it was like Stunt Head's video where, like, at the <laughs> very beginning of it, it's like a, like, a bloodied, chained up like pony being like, hey, this video is not for kids, gets instantly marked for kids. It's like, what? What's happening here? There is yeah, no like, escape. Yeah, we, we've got like conflicting YouTube systems here where they're they're trying to clamp down on Elsa Gate content. They don't want offensive of stuff in, in kids' videos. But at the same and that's time, great. Yeah, and it is, and and they did a pretty good job actually. They cleaned up cleaned up a lot. But at the same time, they're trying to they're trying to comply with uh, you know anything even remotely kid related. They're trying to not collect information on to avoid future fines and trouble with the FTC again. Mm -hmm. So I I think they're they're being way too strict. I don't think the FTC really cares about communities like our own. I don't I don't think YouTube has to shut down pony content in general like that. Um, I don't know. That, that's my opinion. Obviously, maybe <laughs> YouTube <laughs> YouTube thinks otherwise. Obviously. YouTube specifically has a uh, ha has a uh, has a bone to pick with the brony fandom. And well, animation communities in general, you know, it's not just bronies, but like they would rather just sweep everyone under the rug and we're all included in this made for kids thing because that's easier than like petitioning for us to the FTC and saying, "No, some of these videos aren't for kids and it's more complicated than yeah. that." And uh, uh, even that, even that though, the FTC does provide alternatives and YouTube decided to make it a black and white decision where it didn't have to be. The, the FTC provides mixed audience content where they recognize kids might watch something that's also for adults. And YouTube didn't implement that system at all. They're just doing for kids or not for kids. And that's really annoying. That's such a shame. I didn't know about that part. That oh, yeah. sucks. In my personal opinion, what makes it the most frustrating is that for every video you upload onto YouTube, that's one of the first questions it asks you is, is this video made for kids? And you can put no. And so the fact that it can automatically just have a bot or an algorithm or, you know, a person following their um, following their guidelines immediately just mark it without your consent. That, that's what really annoys me. I can see like the idea behind it, like, oh, no, someone could be lying, for instance. 
Like, I can see the, the idea behind it, but, you know. Yeah, I, but if I that's s- the case, then why give us the option in the first place? Exactly, yeah. Well, like- so that that was required by the FTC. That was one of the stipulations. They have to give that requirement, but <laughs> the I wish the FTC specifically said we should have the final decision and get the liability for that, because I guess yeah. YouTube's worried about people outside the country not being prosecuted by the FTC, and then that mm. liability falls back upon YouTube, so it, yeah. it gets pretty messy legally. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I think like a, a big thing is like, oh, um, initially when I started hearing about this stuff, I'm like, oh, why isn't like, why isn't YouTube kids just like a much smaller thing where it is only like uh, human reviewed stuff? But like the the goal of the whole like COPPA thing isn't to get like isn't to get an area that's uh, that's safe for kids. It's to get all the content that kids want to watch in a specific area because if kids like if kids want to watch a specific thing and it's not in their section that's not going to stop them but like the fact that they don't want to like do anything about that just like ah it's so frustrating i I can understand why youtube is kind of throwing a fit because the ftc is is being pretty harsh like they're not even allowed to get tracking cookies or you know that's why playlists and stuff like that died but YouTube, YouTube decided instead of taking the initiative to try to find a solution for this, they're trying to follow the, the letter of the law exactly without any attention to the spirit of the law, which is just to protect kids. They, they're not really, they're not paying that any attention. They're just trying to do exactly what the FTC told them to with as little effort as possible and not trying to find any solutions themselves, which is, you know, a very, a very corporate kind of decision to make as opposed to implementing those sort of mixed audience decisions and stuff like that instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's just such a shame. Yeah. Um, but with all this, like, with all this funky YouTube stuff going on, personally, I don't see things getting any better, like, anytime soon. Um, but, like, like in in a perfect world, um, things would improve. But uh, what do you think about the possibility of, like, other platforms, like, rising up for the, for the community specifically? Like, there's PonyTube out there. Uh, I know there's several other, like, uh, fan-run things, or just, like, other websites like uh i know daily motion's basically dead at this point but like uh, there are people who've tried that and like that sort of thing what do you think about the possibility of like a different platform uh being where the pony community migrates to i think that right now again it's kind of pessimistic because anywhere else is going to have the same or much much worse problems uh for example i, I tried uploading something to tiktok you know everyone's on tiktok i gotta try this hip new thing out it immediately got taken out for a copyright claim with no appeal. Like, you, you just can't, it's just like, oh, nope, gosh. you can't have this. <laughs> People who are like, who know the lore of my channel might know it's it's the one video I also got a copyright claim that didn't contain the actual content at all. It was uh, an old short I made with my sister a long time ago. Anyway, for people who know oh. what that is, you know what that is. But like, basically, it, it, was a, it was a fake copyright claim that shouldn't have happened. And I had no way to dispute it. But on YouTube, you can at least dispute stuff. Like YouTube, the, this, this, oh, the horrible reality is that YouTube kind of is the best place because they give us all these features and options. Like YouTube is the most open, transparent, and, and, and dynamic platform out there. <laughs> and we have all these problems yeah. with YouTube. And I, I think a lot something that's really troubling is that other places are just going to be worse than that. So I'm hoping, and this is a bit of a tangent, kind of like what happened with Elon Musk on Twitter. I'm hoping something oh, so... So huge happens to YouTube that people are forced to rethink how we use social media instead of just oh, yeah. migrating from one service to another or, you know, instead of just using something different than YouTube that's similar to YouTube. You mentioned PonyTube. I would love to see more stuff along the lines of PeerTube and Mastodon and all that all that sort of stuff, which has these yeah. open standards that are all connected. Like, if you don't like the way PonyTube does things, you can just launch your own version of PeerTube, you know, like, and it remains all interconnected so you can still follow your same creators and stuff. Like, yeah. that, I need to look into PonyTube really bad. Yeah. No, I mean, PonyTube seems really niche right now. I think it's mostly popular with, like, 4chan, but, like, the, tech, the technology yeah. behind it, I think, really appeals to everyone. I, I would hate for it to become, like, a, a political thing or, or a, a click thing or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Just the idea that anybody can join a Mastodon. You don't have to join Equestria Social. You can spin up your own or, you know, stuff like that. I hope that becomes popular. And, and to bring it back to YouTube, I hope it specifically becomes popular regarding where we put our videos. That'd be nice. It would be nice to have, like, some sort of alternative where people are going. And um, But... Yeah, it just it it just is such a shame that like that that has to be something that we're like starting to consider like that things are just going this bad with YouTube in the first place because right now like yeah like you said it's it's the best place to go for things just because of how how accessible it is how open it is compared to like what other things offer it literally comes pre-installed on Android <laughs> like that's how accessible it is 
like YouTube is basically becoming a term in itself as in like uh, uh, like how how Googling something turned into a turned into a term. You don't know how to do something. Oh, just YouTube it. Like yeah, I it, don't know how up to date these statistics are, but I'm pretty sure YouTube is the second biggest website on the Internet, second to like Google. So one and the same, basically. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just mind boggling. But. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't spend the entire episode uh, complaining <laughs> about the uh the single well the yeah the major platform that we have our audience on yeah right. <laughs> I know how it is we, we, yeah. we, we had our youtube kids rant yep there we go i, I appreciate uh you uh, humoring us with that yeah um, no like i said it, it's something that i'm passionate about obviously because it directly affects the community i call home like i, I could rant about course. it for hours <laughs> yeah and we we have done that. <laughs> um, you know, we don't have hours. I mean, I listened to you rant for it for like what twenty minutes on your channel. So yeah, I think I'll delve into uh, something a little a, a little bit different. Um, so like you clearly have a very big attachment to the uh, to the pony fandom. You've stuck with it for this long. I think a lot of people who are in this fandom have like uh, even most people. Are like oh yeah they've had a phase where they've like dipped out of it but they've come back like do you have any other like is there any other fandom that you've like found to be like uh to gel with your interests or like that you've spent a lot of time with do you ever like plan on like doing content for a different group or anything like that yeah i probably wouldn't like jump right into a different fandom exactly i mean i have different hobbies and interests you know like i, I like video making in general that's a pretty general I, and not really fandom it's more of a sub community it's more of a community i guess but like yeah yeah no like if i were to jump over to like a different show or some other piece of media i, I don't really see myself doing that so i guess the simple answer is no um i, I th i've thought about doing like non-pony stuff just talking about general tech topics or you know stuff i'm interested in um yeah so i, I guess the answer is probably not i don't really see myself doing anything a a quite as obsessive as ponies i guess you could say <laughs> yeah it's just crazy like how many people that this is their like their thing, you know? Mm. Like ponies are such a big thing for such a big group of people. Yeah. And I think it's kind of a like there are other fandoms out there that are like that are much bigger or have like have uh tons of content made for it. But I like I personally haven't seen like nearly as much like i don't want to word it in a bad way but like undying loyalty <laughs> for like no, for well, like a series it is very hard to put into words for like an outsider like a non-brony of just how all-consuming the pony stuff can be like you yeah. can like you can have wear pony clothing listen to pony music watch pony videos make pony art you know like you, know, it, you, you can be and i am fully involved with pony in some way on like a daily basis and it just it's more yeah. than just a matter of identity. It's like it just surrounds yeah. you. Your brain is eighty percent po pony, Mayana. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you lobotomize yourself and put a plushie there. <laughs> no, like, it, I, I think of like a challenge. Like, well, could, could I go one day without being exposed to friendship is magic? I don't think I could, even if I really, really tried. I would probably come across some stranger wearing a shirt or something. You know, like you can't escape it. <laughs> I've gotten to like the end of a day, and like there, there's a period of time. Where, like, I'd get to the end of my day, and I'm like, you know, I don't think I thought about ponies at all today. <laughs> Shoot! I, <laughs> I can honestly say I don't think I've ever been there. You know, I boot up my computer, and I'm greeted by my, my login screen. It's just derpy above my password. Like, <laughs> I'd have to disable yeah, yeah. that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's hard to break free. The ride never ends, as they say. So. Yeah, it's very, very, very fitting. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up is, um, so I don't think I actually wrote this down. Uh, in the questions, that's mostly because I think uh, I wrote these questions before before this news popped up. But um, you've had a lot of involvement with the uh, uh, with at least the pony side of things with the uh, Reddit's like r slash place uh, event, uh, both the ones that happened in 2017 and 2022. I think it was. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, it was last year. Um, yeah, and then recently. There's been some news. A lot of people were freaking out thinking we were going to have another place uh, this April. And, and when that didn't happen, like everything kind of died down. And now we're getting, uh, I'm sure you've seen, <laughs> we're getting some sort of news that like maybe something might actually be popping up. Some leaks previously. Like I, I, didn't, I didn't follow the situation super closely, but um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I imagine there's probably a lot of people still who don't know what place is. It was basically a social experiment where you can place a pixel every five minutes. 
and obviously just a random pixel isn't accomplishing much but as a community like you could draw art and text text and stuff like that and and yeah. because there's limited space there you, you develop factions and you either go to war or make peace treaties and it becomes very very much like a a, a real-time strategy game um and very social based game where you're jumping across discord servers and subreddits and stuff talking to people to try to organize stuff and it becomes super super involved and just as pony takes over your life uh <laughs> if you get involved with r slash place it will take over your life you'll, you'll see pixels when you close your eyes up at night but um <laughs> they're in your waking dreams <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, last month, around mid-March or so, uh, some data miners found place assets brought back into Reddit, suggesting that April 1st would be, um, once again, it would come back. And long story, very long story short, no, it didn't come back April 1st. They ended up not doing an event for the first time in years, which was really unexpected. Um, but along with some of those asset leaks, we also got a leak from uh, a, a German a German moderator for some, some German meme subreddit I don't really know anything about, but they basically said... Hey, look, I got this t exclusive mock-up screenshot of uh, what r slash place is going to look like. It's coming back June 23rd for Reddit's anniversary or whatever whatever they said, you know? And everyone's yeah. like, yeah, right. They're picking apart the mock-up. The mock-up uses art from 2017. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look anything like official, right? <laughs> and then, uh, when was it? Uh, when I think was it was it? like a week ago. Yeah, it was recently. Uh, th it was recently. April 2nd. Yeah, it was uh, uh, earlier... Oh, no, that's not April 2nd. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't know no, the date. No, 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 no. I'm, was... I'm looking through my webpage. I don't know the date. But anyway, recently, uh, someone data mined the new app update, the Reddit app update, and found the UI that was part of the German leak. And now people are like, wait a minute. If this person wait predicted the, U the UI update, they're probably right about the June 23rd, up the, the, the date as well, right? It's like, it's like that gif of like <laughs> the person seeing all the equations going past them. The, or, or the conspiracy meme from, uh, I think it was Always Sunny, of the guy yeah. with like, yeah, the, the yarn. And, like, mm -hmm. Earlier I said, long story short, that's because we spent weeks uh, developing a Discord server, organizing oh bronies, gosh. looking for clues. We, we, we were yeah. ready to go April 1st for a new r slash place. And uh, mm -hmm. it didn't happen, but it looks like it might still. I remember like just like, hoping and praying that it wasn't going to happen April oh, 1st because yeah. uh, uh, last year I I got very involved with it like I didn't um, there were obviously like some people like uh, uh, there were a bunch of people like who were streaming it and like getting involved with the Brony fandom like I know Single Hoof like we had him on uh, and talked about it a bit uh, with him but like I just kind of was there just following it. And like you said, like it consumes you for the time that it's up. <laughs> I feel like I should clarify. I hope it doesn't come back. I would hate for there to be another place. It's so stressful. Oh, oh definitely. I, uh, I wasn't yeah. there, but like I'd imagine it was. <laughs> oh, it's like, it, here's the thing, right? And like people are like, oh, if, if it's so stressful, then just don't do it. But like, here's the thing. I don't want it to come back. I agree. <laughs> But it's so cool, though. <laughs> it is. It's such a unique experience. There's nothing else on the internet like it at all. But yeah, I remember like being at work, like checking my phone, looking at it, like uh, making sure things are still up, hearing about the streamers, and then getting home, hopping on Discord calls and like in main chat, and then like uh, going to sleep and uh, saying I'm going to bed. Yeah, and then I've, looking I, at my phone for three hours. I've got to plug my video, which is an hour long deep dive, and it just like kind of casually scratches yes. the surface in an entertaining way. Like it gets so deep. <laughs> R slash place is interesting. It's like it's not just. It is literally like a gathering of the internet, essentially. Like just the entire internet just comes together. Yet the social aspect of random communities coming together and like unlikely, you know, alliances and going to war with unlikely groups and like you got underdogs like the bronies and you have the giant like Twitch streamers with their tens oh, of thousands yeah. of followers we're, and yeah, bronies oh, were like the biggest underdog in that entire thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we were. I mean, I've yet to hear about a community which was as small as us, which w that hit as much resistance as we did. So, yeah, I don't know. We might have been. Yeah. Yeah. I think there were there were plenty of communities that were much smaller, oh, yeah. but they weren't really like you know being actively targeted or anything. Yeah, there were like factions of like one or two people just trying to maintain some pixel art. But again, like you said, they weren't being actively targeted like Bronies were. Yeah, it was just it, it was crazy. But um, but yeah, I remember like this year when like things were being talked about. I'm like, oh no, because I was talking <laughs> to Single Hoof last year. I'm like, oh, it'd be really cool to like to join the group of people that are like trying to stream it like 24 seven or whatever. Um, and I'm like, I'm in the middle of trying to figure out if I'm moving or not. Like, this is not going to happen. <laughs> um, 
the worst and timing. <laughs> I remember being, I was at work when uh, you guys had like the, the mod meeting for like planning out. <laughs> yeah, we, planning we were having meetings. We were ready to go April 1st. It was crazy. Yeah, everybody was so prepared for it, but it didn't happen, thankfully. it's It might happen still, though. Which my, is my prediction, concerning. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction because it's so early on still. I, I think they're going to do something similar to place. I, there's no way they're just going to bring it back exactly the same, because if you look at how they evolved yeah. it since 2017 to 2022, and it changed in many big ways that I won't go into here, obviously, but I, I'm hoping they do something like Infinite Canvas. Like, there's some can, there's some pixel clones. There, there's some place clones that like have an Infinite Canvas, where you can just scroll infinitely and, and draw art wherever you want. And I think if there's, yeah. you know, less competition for areas, that might make sense. And the German lake, actually, specifically it leaks the idea that moderators can pin their location to their subreddit, which tells me that maybe maybe locations on, on r slash place will be harder to find. It'll be a bigger canvas. So it might might change the dynamic if they have, like, uh, different kinds of cooldowns and, like, different, a much larger canvas. You know, I guess we'll see. It would it would definitely be cool if they like uh shaked things up a bit, shook things up for the sake of not just doing the same thing uh every other April Fools or whatever. Yeah, right. Um, Cuz yeah, if they just keep repeating it, it it'll obviously get stale. The like the uniqueness of it will kind of be like not nearly as many people excited about it cuz I think I think one of the big things that made place so like uh, so entertaining, but also stressful at the same time. Is like we it, this might be a one time thing. Yeah. Like it, especially with twenty twenty two. Like Reddit's never redone a social experiment before. Like this is our last chance to get like something for the pony fandom like uh, engraved in history. Like yeah, I mean, there's been lots and lots of other pixel clones of people doing similar things on different websites, and some people even do it better than Reddit might have done it, arguably. But the difference oh, yeah. between those is they weren't, they're not events. Like you can just log into one of them now and draw pixels wherever. It's kind of not a big deal. But our slash place, you know, it's a limited time. You know, it's like if you don't, if you don't do something now, you're going to miss your chance. So it's a lot, a lot of FOMO involved. It's also very competitive. It's very unique. It's a very, very like high level game, basically, where anybody can just hop in and place a pixel. But to like get involved with the community, to, 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 to conduct diplomacy with other, com other communities, to, to understand the strategies and the technology involved and, you know, like overlays and uh, it's like it's endless. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like it's worth mentioning also that Reddit's IPO is coming out soon <laughs> around J June, I think it is. So oh, they're gosh. obviously hoping to drum up a lot of attention. And what better way to yeah. do that than have another place? That's more evidence, I think. Yeah, they're wanting to do something. That, that makes sense. Every share of Reddit you buy, you get two pixels. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Monetize place. Oh no. <laughs> you, get, you get shareholders' rights in r slash place. Oh r slash place hosted by EA. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, exactly. And this time there's a winner. The stakes is all of Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys want the color DLC? Like <laughs> million dollar, million dollar homepage, but it's Reddit's IPO. Get one extra pixel by watching this message from our sponsor. Anyways, uh, all that, all that said, yeah, definitely go check out uh, Little Shy's place videos. He did one on the 2017 one, one on the 22 uh, one, and uh, yeah, I imagine if something happens again, you're planning on doing something for that as well. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I probably won't do a big video. I, I oh. might do like a recap video. Uh, my focus will probably be to stream like Single Hoof did. That's what I'd like to get into. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, Ooh. that would be awesome. I hope to do something like that, but. Uh. Who can say really? Out of our mains, but, r slash um, place. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be cool. You could totally just draw your own thing, like if you have a logo or something, and like as long as you don't tell everyone it's pony related, nobody was nobody's gonna attack it. <laughs> it's just <laughs> <laughs> our our entire brand is horses. Unfortunately, oh uh, okay, can't hide it then. I have stated in the past. I'm glad that we went with the name out of our mains though, because if something horrible happens to the pony community, guys, we could just shift over to the furry community. Oh yeah. no, mains works for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to commission our personas then. That's uh, the dark timeline. <laughs> you can't make me. You can't make me. Yeah, we're we're planning on sticking to horses. They won't let you leave. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. All of all of these for legal reasons. All of this is uh, all of this is jest. We are not planning on switching to for to a furry podcast. You got to do Philly Fantasia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, Maynard.
Would you mind uh, letting me ask a question? Because I know you got a long list, but... Uh, no, you can't ask a question. What do you think this is? Oh, yeah, go You're just it. the third wheel. Oh, gosh. That's not go really it, inaccurate, honestly. Go for All it, right, Anyway, um, so I had to ask you, um, because it's my favorite internet series of all time, can you tell us what it's like um, being a staple of Bronies React? Oh, I don't know, staple, man. Like, see, <laughs> y- you say that, and like, you know, you're right. Like, I've, I, I think I first appeared in like 2015 or something like that. So I have been on Bronies React a while, but to me, it still feels new. Like, I think of Bronies React, I don't really think of being part of it. <laughs> I mean, I think the that's last crazy. one that was uploaded, you're in the thumbnail. Yeah, that's true. I, I think I'm in a couple thumbnails, but, uh, but yeah, no, that's it, been a lot of fun. Uh, race is really laid back and chill about how we make those and it's kind of the, i have the freedom to do whatever i want get as silly as i want so yeah i know it's been it's been great yeah we've had um we've had a couple people on here who have been like a part of bronies react but only like uh only like a couple times wait we have uh, or like a, a one time uh yeah like well, i know we had prince well yeah before you were on we had uh we had dj the d oh yeah dj the, the. um but i guess how did that like how did that all start? How did you get involved with uh with AC Race Best and like the Bronies React crew and how how'd that all start? I think it I think it started on just me leaving a comment on one of his videos and him recognizing me or something like that. It was probably one of his vlogs even. I just said something. And then shortly after I left that comment, I think he DM'd me on Twitter like saying, Hey, you want to join the next Bronies React? I'm like, uh yeah, that <laughs> I don't <laughs> no, I, I don't feel no like no, I don't feel <laughs> yeah, like right? it. You make a <laughs> you know, tempting I, offer. <laughs> It's the golden ticket. I've been watching Bronies Rex since, you know, joining the community and like to actually be invited to that. Yeah, it's amazing. Literally, it was the reason I joined the community. That's how I got into My Little Pony in the first place. Wow. Yeah. Another project that I wanted to mention that you like that you got involved with and ended up like taking over is the uh, is the like top 10 pony videos uh, series. Like, how did that happen? Because I know I don't I don't remember who ran it previously. Uh, Jay Huller. Um, yeah, it was Jay Holler. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, Jay Holler. But uh, you ended up taking over it, and you've been running it for quite some time. So I wanted to ask a little bit about that. Like, uh, how did that happen? Do you like? Do you think you'll be running that for quite some time? Do you have like? Uh, have you ever thought about like transferring it over to someone? Or I know I just threw like fifteen questions at you, but. <laughs> Well, yeah. Tackle in any order you want. In terms of like just uh, taking it over, it's kind of funny because it was similar to the whole the whole Bronies Rack thing where I think Jay Holler recognized me as being a regular voter back when he voted in the comments of the video. So he, he probably saw me voting in all the videos. He saw me appear in some of the top tens. and like, hey, let's ask him. But yeah, so yeah, it was January 2017. I have this written down. It looks like um, that's when I kind of first took over it and decided to make all the changes and really get involved with that. And then uh, I guess the other question was like, how long do I think I'll be doing it? It's kind of weird. Like I, when when I took over after Jay Holler, uh, again, this was I, I guess this was about when the show ended, right? Or no, I guess it was a few years before. But uh, leading into the show ending, I, I kind of had this bittersweet realization, like, oh, this whole top ten pony videos thing is going to die in my hands. Like I'm going to be the last one to hold on to this, right? And and here we are. I've been running it longer than Jay Holler did, <laughs> and yeah. it's showing no signs of stopping. As you were discussing earlier, we're getting new creators all the time, and the, the list is always evolving and growing, and. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to end, and maybe I will have to start considering handing it to someone else someday. Um, no immediate plans, though. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think it's been going well. Okay, so you're not going to sell it to me. All right, moving on. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's for sale. I'm going to have my own IPO for it, I guess. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. trademarked. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, well, speak, speak, well, I don't know why I think of that. And, uh, you said trademark. I thought of branding. In terms of branding, I actually do have some plans to hopefully evolve it even further and get a new logo and oh. get a new refresh for it. So kind of the opposite of handing it over. I'm gonna, I, I want to do more with it. Ooh. Oh man, my pin, my uh, my pin on my bag is gonna be outdated if you update the logo. Yeah, no, that's the thing. I stopped making those pins. I didn't give out any of the last conventions I've been to because I want to get new pins. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It's good. It'll be vintage. It'll be cool. It's gonna become a collectible. There you go. Yeah. So when you, because uh, you said when you uh, like left a comment, you got reached out to like uh, AC recognized you. So at that time, you were already like uh, you had already like picked up some steam in the fandom. What do you think was the type of content that really got you like uh, got you to where you are today? Like got you noticed and started like blowing your channel up and everything. OK, uh, hold on. I got to take notes here. <laughs> <laughs> i mean th- like there's two ways to approach that um you you can get really involved with the community and like not get any views or anything like that but like people recognize you like like there's people famous just for commenting on equestria daily you know like oh yeah there, there's big names in the community just known for being around so so actively you know 
but but even this, on YouTube, yeah, even on YouTube, you know, there's plenty of small channels that have really really passionate followings, and it doesn't really matter like how many views or subs you get because you're still making a big impact and and sharing your passion. But but in terms of you know numbers and views and the algorithm and all that, I, I think it was my my longer Cinemersons video uh, for Equestria Girls is where my channel really blew up. And and one YouTube is funny because it like it has like you're either in or you're out when you first make a channel and you're small. Oh, definitely. They don't suggest your videos at all. Like no, <laughs> you, yep. you could not exist as far as YouTube is concerned. But then you reach a point where YouTube looks at your videos and say, oh, maybe random other people would like to see these videos. And once you're in, they start suggesting your videos and other people's suggestions and homepage and then. If people like your videos, that makes more people get suggestions for your videos, and you just it's exponential yeah. growth at first. And yeah, for for me, it would be the Equestria Girls Everything Wrong with video, um, mainly just because that video was so much longer than my previous videos. But also the I guess the formula there is once people watch that video, they go back and watch the others in my series. So yep, just make repetitive uh, repetitive formulaic content, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just make the same video over and over and over. <laughs> oh uh, no, well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of doing that. In a less pessimistic angle, it would just be to have a catalog of videos that people want to look through. Is all. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more like keeping your content. Um, like a, a lot, a, a lot of advice I've I've heard like around the like smaller creators that have like that have taken off a bit is to have consistent content. You know, because yeah, like you said, as soon as. Like one of your videos blow up, like people are gonna see that video and they're gonna go through your channel, uh, and they want to see like uh, if they enjoyed that video, chances are they're gonna want to find videos similar to that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not, but if you can get people to like watch your video and then watch more of your videos, that signals majorly to YouTube that your videos are worth showing other people. Uh, so yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. the biggest uh, algorithm trick I know. I feel like something that's helped me um in, with my channel is making playlists and organizing videos that way. Yeah. Yeah, if you set up a playlist for like a series, like in my case, it would be Cinemare Sins. Uh, there's actually a playlist checkbox you can check that says this is a series. And uh, YouTube is more likely to suggest those videos next to each other then. Um, something I really did want to ask, especially now that Maynard's taking a second, is I hear different opinions about this all the time. And I wanted to ask you, um, do you think that uh, hashtags in your description are important or not? Oh, yeah. Hashtags are kind of a new thing on YouTube. I, like, Didn't they introduce them recently at all? I, I think, think I think it was I think it was definitely recently. I don't remember. I don't think I don't know if it was this year, but it was recently. Yeah, yeah I've been going for about a year and they've been a thing since I started. So it was uh, maybe in like 2021. They probably introduced it. Yeah. See, all my knowledge of tags are like pre hashtags on youtube like i don't know how outdated this is but I've, I've actually talked to someone at youtube who specifically told me tags don't matter like they don't they're not worth anything <laughs> and uh since having that conversation with someone at youtube i've also learned on my own that the tags actually do matter when it comes to review if you put this video is for kids in your tags they're gonna hit it for kids so so don't don't put any like you know if you have something controversial in your video and you put that controversial tag in your video it could affect your reviews and all that stuff but uh yeah. but yeah no basically my my view of tags is that they're worthless, but maybe hashtags are different. Maybe hashtags do put put you in some kind of category. Maybe they're gonna. Maybe the hashtags are like the new like tags, I guess. Because I, if I recall, I think tags used to do something back in the day, but it doesn't anymore. They probably still do something, just not as much. Yeah. I don't know. I'm wondering if like hashtags are basically like um. A better version of normal tags. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they're probably more searchable. I know YouTube puts them in, what, like the title or just below the title now? Like Again, yeah. this is all like new to me. Like, I don't really understand hashtags on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I think they put them above the title. Uh, oh, I think wow, the, okay. fir the first three are either right above or right below the title. And I think you can have up to a certain amount before YouTube just like stops registering them. But it's like a lot. It's like a hundred. Yeah. My guess would be that's related to search, search and history and stuff like that, as opposed to discovery. What yeah. I've learned is if you click the hashtags on mobile anyway, it will open up like the search bar and it will have that tag in the search bar to find other content like that. So that might be oh, yeah. what it is. It'd be a good test to see if suggested videos also have tags. I'm, I'm going to guess no. I'm guessing it doesn't relate to that, but maybe it does. I think the way it used to work with tags, cause, uh, or at least I, I assume this is the way it works, because I think, I think YouTube even has like a little blurb like telling you what to do with your tags like um it's something along the lines of like uh, uh if someone frequently misspells like your video or something they can use this to still to still find it and i think what it used to be is like essentially you'd just um put a bunch of tags and those were the main thing that the the search algorithm was lo looking for um but now that there's so much content like all the time and that uh, tags would be something super easy to abuse if like there's a popular topic you just put that 
put like a tag to Squid Game or to <laughs> like Paw Patrol or something in there, and like immediately your video blows up. You solved the system. Good game. I think the big thing um, now is that the captions are the automatic captions are so good. They just already know what your video is about at this point. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, um, but it's it's crazy because I've heard um because obviously when I started I wanted to know like you know the correct things to do to give myself a fighting chance starting from nothing. And there were just so many like reputable people. Some were saying, you know, oh, it doesn't matter at all. Don't worry about it. And then there are others are saying you are literally crippling yourself if you don't do this. Well, are they referring to YouTube or like other platforms? Like I know. I think I think it's YouTube. Like obviously like hmm. hashtag stuff are really important on like Twitter. Yeah. If people are searching for something. Yeah. Nobody could really seem to agree felt like on YouTube, whether how important uh, hashtags were for search results, and stuff like that. I know on YouTube, most views come from suggestions on the homepage or suggestions on the, uh, you know, the related videos area. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think tags affect that at all, but I could be wrong. I mostly just use them because, you know, figure it's better safe than sorry. All, all of my interaction with the tags are negative. Like you have, uh, you know, reviewers will look at that and I'm pretty sure it could be coincidental. But once I stopped putting My Little Pony in my tags... I stopped getting copyright claims too, so that could be related. Oh. <laughs> I have not gotten a copyright claim yet, but I'm also a small channel, so yeah, I don't and know. Yet is the is the very important word. There. Things are also a lot different now with Hasbro. At least I mm -hmm. hope that they are. A, a jinx, right? But <laughs> they've gotten a lot better about that. Now this video is gonna be taken down. Thanks. Man, I remember yeah, Shout Factory. Who remembers back in the day Shout Factory had the DVD rights to the Milo Pony? Oh, and gosh. they were taking down everything. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Oh, that's awful. Oh, like literally blocking every Brony video uploaded during like a one year period of time. It was, it was a disaster. I don't, I don't know if I was part, I don't think I was part of the community back then, but I think I remember hearing about it at some point. If we could survive that, we'll survive the made for kids thing. <laughs> we'll be okay. We can, we can survive <laughs> the adpocalypse as well, like yeah. multiple times. We can do this, brothers. Yeah. All right, everyone, we just need to get together, like, you know, get into the bunker. Um, We'll be fine. Um, we'll get a backlog of good videos. You know, everything will be okay. <laughs> we'll just like have a local copy of the Pony Archive, and we'll have years worth of Pony content. We'll be okay. Oh yeah, there just you go. every single Pony thing ever released. <laughs> I guarantee there are people out there who have like massive just hard drives that are filled with everything that's on the Pony Archive. At least a like, good portion of it. Data hoarding is a big hobby, and like I have a lot of respect for that hobby, and I want to become a data hoarder. And then you have data hoarders who are bronies, like saving all of us by <laughs> downloading everything. Yeah, data hoarding is like a very important thing in this day and age. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, the the pony fandom is really good about that. Like uh, especially like gaming communities are really good about stuff like that, like game preservation and that sort of thing. Like I don't know where a lot of like history would be if not for people like uh, obsessively like like downloading things isn't there some story about like a, a season of doctor who being lost to all time and it being recovered because someone just happened to save it all or something some like random I person so. i would not be surprised <laughs> i mean doctor who's a, a big series again i wouldn't be surprised if that is the case but like back in the day like when it wasn't as big i think i, I don't know it was some it was some fringe thing about someone archiving a bunch of stuff and i think they even pirated it or something i don't know it was some story about how archivers do a lot of good yeah, the main thing that sticks out to me as far as that goes is um, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of especially older Brony musicians, if they like transition out of the fandom, they'll like delete a lot of their old Pony music and then you'll see somebody else uploading it on a complete separate YouTube channel. So it's like still there. I know in the Pony video scene, like if a video gets deleted, it's pretty likely, especially if it's a big video, it'll be up like the same day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 like you just got people watching for that sort of thing. I've even done that sometimes. Like if a video disappears, I'll notice it first and get right back to archiving it. <laughs> Don't let the flame die out. Yeah. So I think we've covered uh, most of the most of the big topics that I wanted to go into. Uh, if there wasn't any other like any other questions anyone had, um, I think it'd be good to go into some like some smaller topics. Or maybe maybe this is going to be a bigger topic than I than I expect. But what got you into collecting plushies? Oh, the the plush saga. You, you don't think that's a big topic? Let me all right, all right, prove all right. you wrong. <laughs> Let's sit down and have a three-hour podcast all right. real quick. Get the popcorn, Nambi. <laughs> no, I mean, so the plushie thing, obviously, uh, you know, I've had like a pony plush since like the very beginning. And the old Funrise plushies for those. Remember the, the spaghetti mains at Walmart? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh yeah. 
But no, my, my gateway drug into to pony plushies was definitely Blackwater, who's an artist. I, I They're on Etsy, DeviantArt, and all that. But uh, Blackwater made really, really affordable cuddle-sized plushies, which is what I call one size smaller than life size. We'll get to that in a second, too. <laughs> okay. But, uh, what, one, once you get to that like that scale of plush, where it's like a work of art, and it's huge, uh, it takes on like a whole... It's like it's a hobby in, its, in itself to engage with that community. And just the creation of those plushies, the, the market for those plushies, uh yeah it's a it's a pretty big community actually yeah i'm slowly falling into it i mean the the pony plush stuff has existed ever since the beginning like i'm pretty sure like the first BronyCon had plushies um uh, they've kind of always been around but the the community itself is pretty niche almost borderline underground uh it kind of depends how you approach it obviously it's lots of sub communities um after BronyCon 2019 that i i was invited to a plush discord where i realized i was actually missing out on a lot Turns out they had like a giant plush meetup at that BronyCon in someone's hotel room. They had like a king size oh, bed, yeah. for, not 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 literally. I'm exaggerating, but like floor to ceiling of plushies, and it was like all over the oh room. My gosh! And I was like, man, I should. Mountain. That was the first year I brought a plush to BronyCon, and I missed out. It was the last BronyCon. I'm never gonna be able to do something like that again. Oh. <laughs> I say that ironically because I've actually helped organize a couple of plush meetups at other conventions. Yeah, and they've been great. Um. But yeah, no, joining that, that, that Discord server kind of really led me to f- discover this whole other sub-community that had not only a, a very well-established existence of just plushies and that, that all the fun that comes with that, but also the potential there. The server I joined was actually this like niche underground 4chan plush server, basically. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't discover it through 4chan myself, but like that, that was kind of where some of those, those folks hung out. And uh, I mm-hmm. joined that, and it's kind of where I opened my eyes to like, oh, wow, there's like p- lots of people who own life-size plushies. And, oh my it, you gosh. know, <laughs> some of that gets into like the cringe culture of people like owning Dakimakuras and stuff like that. But, but in general, it's actually surprisingly wholesome. And I, it was a lot of fun. And uh, seeing these people share yeah. their life size plushies, it sort of becomes like a badge of honor to like, they have a role for anyone, a role on Discord for anybody who has a life size plush. And it's like a different color. And it's like, I've always aspired to get that oh, wow. role and have a life size plush of my own. And joining that community really uh, made me interested in that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, since I was a uh, my gateway drug was Blackwater, I I commissioned a life size plush through Blackwater, and uh, long story short, now we have three life size plushies from different artists. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hey, once once you take that first step, you you've already you're you're already far gone. Pony plushies, yeah. not even once. When I bought that first Blackwater plush, I, that was yeah, it was all over for me. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. It, it grew from there, not only growing my own collection and learning about like the the hobby of collecting and creating plushies. I actually briefly tried to make plushies. Uh, and also just the maintenance of how you how you keep them in your collection and you keep them free of dust and all that. And there's rituals for giving them baths. <laughs> Everyone has their own ritual for cleaning their plushies. Like interesting. I, I and a lot of other people we have our own dedicated spot cleaning vacuum just for the plushies. And there's just oh, wow. there's discussion about what kind of cleaners you use and how you go about doing it. And uh, anyway, yeah. So like I, I in addition to those aspects, um, like I said, I joined this sort of relatively niche 4chan plush server and I was like, wait a minute. There's got to be like I don't know how you say it, a less edgy form of this like a, a, a basically a public thing for pony plushies and I realized there isn't really a public yeah. community for pony plushies so I made one <laughs> I made uh, some social media uh, profiles like on Twitter and stuff and uh, made a Discord yeah. server for it and that basically exploded in the past couple of years and I realized like not only has this plush community existed for all these years but also it's actually growing and I'm seeing more and more people join my server and and become a bigger part of it. Uh, it it's such a rabbit hole. I could go on. There's <laughs> there the, that's crazy. The topic of plush scammers, scammers and sketchy artists who will like basically scam you, uh, is a is a topic I've actually thought about making a video on of going down this rabbit hole. Oh, it's shoot. it's crazy. It's some cool stuff. I I yeah. I never would have thought. <laughs> um, yeah, I personally only have like a few. I have um I have two of the uh, um what's the group that was they may they were like the one official like plushes that were really high quality oh fourth like dimension the, entertainment yeah fourth dimension oh uh, that they're, they're getting they got some competition now with the symbiote is making licensed plushies too. oh i've seen that yeah yeah i i know for a fact that as soon as they release that starlight glimmer plush i'm, <laughs> I'm jumping on that they they got me suckered into the symbiote as well <laughs> like i had to get all the main six and now oh they're coming up with starlight uh, no wait, are they doing starlight yet or no i think they're doing trixie and lyra i think are coming up next and it's like oh no i gotta get a trixie at least yeah <laughs> I think they they had a poll like a while back to be like, oh, the next one we're gonna do is either uh, Starlight or or Luna, or not the next one they're gonna do, but the next one they were gonna like start working on. Yeah. 
Um, so I know that Starlight is in is in the near future. So I'm just yeah, I'm looking forward to Starlight as well. But that's actually another fun thing is the idea that Bronies are still so passionate and still in such big numbers that we can basically like fund this <laughs> this plush company to make uh, licensed French of his magic plushies after all these years yeah. after the show ended. I think that's pretty amazing. They only made 500 of them for the first run. They sold out in a day. They were gone. Wow. So they had to launch new waves and mass produce them in the thousands just to keep up. That's insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I've seen some of their stuff and they're like, they're really high quality. Um, it's, it's interesting to like see that sort of thing nowadays because it feels like most of the plushies that you're going to buy are either, you know, like those fourth dimension plushes that are just kept in mint condition, like in <laughs> bags people are selling at conventions. Have you and seen stuff. them on, on eBay? Uh, I have. I actually got uh, the Twilight one on oh, i don't think maybe it was ebay i think i think i did get it on ebay i mentioned ebay because twilight was produced in higher quantities so she's a little bit higher easier to find yeah. but rarity or rainbow dash pff, good luck paying less than 400 a piece for those it's crazy Goodness. oh wow yeah yeah it's it's crazy just how like how much the price varies because yeah that that twilight one that those are like it, yeah like you said they made a lot of those it ran me like uh, uh i think it was like somewhere around like 40 bucks or something have you heard the legend of the 4de fourth dimension entertainment derpy i have not oh, is that a thing it's a legend so they released prototype images of the 4de derpy which is going to be a mass produced licensed derpy right this was back in the day years ago um, the story goes that they actually produced a bunch and they were going to ship them from China to the U S but, uh, it was either during export or import. Don't remember which an alarm went off. Apparently there was some radioactive contamination and they weren't fit to ship. What? So the story what? goes, they just had a container ship, well, not ship, but a container full of derpy plushies that they just had to destroy because they didn't pass the radiation check for some reason. I don't know oh what, my gosh. I don't know what they were exposed to, but that's the story. That, that derpy always getting to the radioactive <laughs> waste. She just doesn't know what went wrong. <laughs> the, the forbidden radioactive derpy plush. <laughs> so when I heard this story, I doubted it. There's no way that's true, right? Like it's some 4chan story, but, but I looked into it I, and some reputable people say, no, this really happened. And I was like, no, really? And they're like, yeah. That's insane. The hype for the plushie was so high, it literally went nuclear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing it wasn't like actually dangerous levels of radiation. It was just some random thing that they were exposed to. I, it was some technicality. I, I don't know. It was something I'm weird. I guess it was more a worrisome level. Yeah, they they were in a shipment cart full of bananas. Like. <laughs> yeah, it, it could have been some product that just happened to be a little bit radioactive. They were next to or something. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and apparently, like the whole 4D thing, uh, there was like the story again. This is another legend of 4D is that there was like one person at Hasbro that just hated 4D for some reason, uh. <laughs> and they were constantly not approving their licenses and like not letting them make plushies, and it was that so sucks. frustrating. And it was it's just like one shame. person that had beef at Hasbro. And I think once they got fired or left, then now we've, we're seeing all these new plushies. And I wonder why. It was just that one person, yeah. apparently. Huh. Yeah, I did not. Like a, I said, a, the whole plush thing is not a topic that's short for me. That, I, I could, we, could, <laughs> we could go for a while. <laughs> I, I, man, I a was hole. so naive. I was so naive. Yeah, but that's, that's awesome. Uh, so you have like quite the sizable collection of plushies, as you can see in like any of your videos. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, I guess compared to some, it's pretty huge, but there's people out there that have literal rooms that put me to shame. Like, mine's nothing. <laughs> I have nothing on quantity. I am, I'm yeah. pretty proud of my uh, the derpy one I have. I've done a couple. She showed up in a couple of videos, I think, or streams at least. I'm yeah. pretty proud of that. That's my dream plush. That's awesome. I have very few. I have like three, and two of them are the 40E. No, 40E is awesome. I have a small amount as well. Yeah, I have some. I think I realized it was uh, when I moved from my old house to my current one, and I put them all in like uh, trash bags and stuff. I think that's when I realized like I have more of these than I really thought I did. <laughs> they they just like multiply. They just appear. Yeah, like how'd these get here? How? Why does my wallet feel so light? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's been so exciting though, just seeing this sub community grow and to be a part of something fresh and new in the Brony fandom. Even though like. You know, there's shows over 10 years and the show ended years ago. Like, to see this something so fresh and new to be, uh, it's really oh exciting. Oh, God, you know? it's 10 years. Oh, fuck. Well, I mean, the show is nine years, then it's been, what, three or four more years after that? So, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah it, it debuted in 2010. Oh, oh, <laughs> Lauren Faust made the show Bible in 20, 2008, actually. So it's like even older. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel old. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Lauren Faust made the show Bible like a year after I joined YouTube? How is that possible? <laughs> it was uh, before Pony. Uh, like, yeah. how, how old were we in 2008? That's crazy. 
that hurts my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was seven years old. Gosh. Anyways, though, um, since we covered the plushies, which ended up being... Oh, we didn't cover it. I have more. No, I'm well, joking. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, <laughs> was that the prologue? That was the beginning, yeah. Yeah, we took we took the first step into the pool. Um, <laughs> and now Little Shy is here to drag us into the deep end. I, I can I kind of segue out of that by saying it's just one of like many, many sub-communities in the Brony fandom that make it so fresh and interesting on a daily basis. It's really great. Oh, definitely. There, there are like a ton of cool like sub communities in the Brony fandom. Like, uh, um, oh, when you think of sub communities, the first that always comes to my mind is like Fallout Equestria. That was the same like, one I was thinking of. <laughs> that one, oh, that yeah. one took off and got oh, huge. Yeah. Like nowadays, nowadays it's a lot smaller, but it still has its like it still has its groups. It still has animations coming out. Like Paramare does stuff. Um, I see the art, animation, everything pop up like on a regular basis just for that. It's crazy. Yeah. That's just something that I don't think ever is ever gonna die. I love uh I love uh Fallout Questria. Oh yeah, it's great. So anyways, uh yeah, I think we should start like getting to the end here. So hopefully the, the next couple of things I mentioned don't actually end up uh, spiraling <laughs> into too big, but maybe maybe this one you'll have to disagree. Um so I already know the answer for this, but it's kind of tradition to ask all of our guests this. Um I'm pretty sure everyone knows. Um but uh best pony? I thought you didn't want a topic that I could talk about for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. So my, my go-to best pony is definitely Derpy, just for what of she course. represents and how adorable she is. What about main six pony? Now that's a more interesting discussion <laughs> because uh, I don't think, uh, currently I don't really have one favorite main six because they're all great. Like They all have different yeah. reasons to love them. Um, I guess I kind of gravitate towards Fluttershy and she is part of my name after all. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love Fluttershy. She's my favorite too. Uh, what about uh, what about G five? I guess we didn't really talk much about G five, but um, yeah, I, I guess first, like, it, do you, do you have a favorite character from uh, Generation five? Now, I'll be honest, I'm not really following G five at all at this point. Um, That's uh, where pretty much all of us are. I really gave it a shot, man. I was so the ready movie, after I think that movie. The movie was great. Yeah, after that movie, I was like ready for answers. I was ready to go somewhere. I wanted to explore this world, and uh, I feel like it did the opposite of what I wanted personally. But whatever. Yeah, the the movie is the whole reason this podcast exists. Like, oh, really? uh, yeah, we because we had the plan of like, oh, we're gonna be a news podcast. We're gonna cover like news because and fan fiction reading at one point. <laughs> yeah, and we're like, we're like, oh, the the fandom's gonna explode with G five is gonna be so great because the movie was amazing, and now it's it's just been kind of yeah. I don't want I don't want to be too pessimistic. There's lots of G five fans. It's inspired lots of great content. Oh, definitely. But- so far, I think G five has been pretty hit or miss. Yeah, I th- I think everyone has their everyone has their different take on it. Um, but yeah, there there are plenty of people who are who are still like massively enjoying it, and I'm like, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just it's it's such a shame that it didn't end up like it feels like it could have been something much bigger. Yeah, I um, think everybody right now is just waiting to see if like it's even going to continue. I think we're still in like radio silence on what's happening oh. next. Well, isn't it? Isn't it um, tradition? Maybe I'm thinking of Microsoft, but doesn't Hasbro have like one good generation, one bad generation, one good generation? So like, are That's we going to get heard. like a new one after G5 that blows up again and takes the internet by storm? That's what I'm hoping for. Maybe 5.5 is going to be the big one that really takes off. Well, no, we already got 5.5. It's Tell Your Tale, isn't it? Essentially, <laughs> we already... yeah. We're flying through these generations. Oh, oh geez. Well, yeah, generation I... six then, maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's so weird because G the idea of G6 at this point, it's like, you know, I'm not huge into G5. Like I follow it and I do content on it. But it's just like I I don't think I love G5 to where I'm completely turned off by the idea of just skipping to the next generation, but I also like just enough about it to where I'd be hesitant to just like let it end right now. It's just misty, isn't it? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, it's that's great. part of it. <laughs> I am cautiously optimistic about Generation 5 right now. I'm kind of absorbing it by fandom osmosis, just kind of like absorbing the art and content made for it. I don't really have any interest in watching it itself, though. <laughs> yeah, and it it's weird being uh, it's weird being on this side of the fence, like because uh, I know Generation Four had plenty of people that were um that were like only a fan of the first few seasons and like they only learned stuff about the show via like via fandom stuff. And like I always thought, like how can you be involved in this fandom and not consume like all the content like not uh not watch now, all now the content. you get it and now i get it i'm like i haven't i've watched the first few episodes of tell your tale but i've watched i think 
what Make Your Mark had to offer, and I couldn't finish Winter Wish Day. And I was <laughs> I like, I haven't yeah. even seen Winter Wish Day yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah. A friend made me watch it. <laughs> I hate that uh, friend now. <laughs> oh, so it wasn't very good. <laughs> no, Got I'm joking. It. <laughs> it was it was very meh. It wasn't offensive, but it wasn't good either. That's just been the big problem. It's more fun to watch something worse, like Philly Fantasia, something janky. It's more fun to watch something like that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, I, an infamous one would be The Room. Yeah, like, right. That's a good oh, example. Yeah. yeah. My my personal favorite movie of all time is Who Killed Captain Alex. Uh, if you guys haven't heard oh, of it. Yeah. It's... It's like a, uh, I think they had a, somewhere around a hundred and fifty dollar budget. It's like a Ugandan action film. That movie is incredible. I love it to death. Um, I thought your favorite but, yeah. movie was Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Oh, you know what? You're right. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish <laughs> you is my for- favorite movie. <laughs> you forgot it was your favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, you know that's another tradition. Little Shy, have you seen Puss in Boots: The Last Wish? I have not. I'm guessing that's a new one. I've heard about it. It's really yeah, that's bad. that's the new one. Uh, I'm disappointed. Uh, like, I'm gonna have to on, not get upload off the this show. Episode anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard nothing about good things about it. I kind of want to see it. It's great. Oh yeah, I definitely would recommend seeing like, it. Maynard was on me so long. Whenever I'd say like he'd be like, "Have you watched it?" I was like, "No, I haven't watched it." He was on my case so much. <laughs> Check it out if you get the chance. It's on. Uh, it's on Peacock right now. Uh, I think it's coming to. Uh, Netflix eventually. Or you can but... watch it on totally legal websites if you don't have the means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, hey, if it's a um, good movie, I want to pay for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Definitely not. Um, But I think that's about everything. So usually at the end of every episode, we have a couple things that we like to do. Um, First up, we like to have a, uh, we like to have a question of the episode, which, uh, you know, we're supposed to prepare these ahead of time, um, but we never do. Uh, so if anyone has a fun question, people could respond to in the I, comments. I keep telling you, like, we have to prepare these, and I, I always assume that you prepare them, but you never do, Maynard, you never well, why do. why would you assume at this point? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm foolish, I'm just foolish. Continuing to do the same thing over and over and expecting different results yeah, is, like, that, insanity that, that's or the definition something. Of ins- the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting things to change. Hey, you know what the definition of insanity is? It's doing the same things over... <laughs> <laughs> I heard the definition of an insanity was something along the lines of doing the same thing. <laughs> oh my okay. gosh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a pony plush? And if so, do you have a favorite? It's okay, we won't tell the other ones, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll keep it a secret between you and me and every and all of other viewers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, do you have do you have pony plushes? And if so, what's your favorite? So yeah, you can send uh, answers to that. Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, uh, you can put those in the comments below. If you're on Spotify, you can respond to the Q and A. Uh, or if you're on any of the other platforms we're on, you can send it to us on Twitter using the hashtag #MainPod at out of our mains. And uh, for the for the Twitter picture. Send us your plushie hoard if you have one. Send us a picture oh, yeah. of your plushie hoard. I hope you don't mind if I plug it, but if you mention uh, plushie poner on Twitter, I'll love to retweet any pictures of plushies. Oh, definitely. All right. Yeah. Uh, send us those pictures. Uh, use the hashtag main pod or add us at out of our mains on Twitter. Also, be sure to mention at plushie poner on Twitter so Little Shy can retweet your pictures with his plushie Twitter account. Or you can send them to our Discord in our send pics chat. But yeah, that being said, um, Little Shy, uh, do you have any like uh, any upcoming projects that you want to plug, or any like individual creator that you think like uh, uh, needs a little more attention? With our massive following, I guess I could answer both by just uh, mentioning the ongoing effort to keep the top ten pony videos going because there's so many great people in there to check out, including big creators and small creators. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's definitely something I'm going to be working on soon. I got to actually, as we're recording this, which doesn't relate to when people are listening, I'm sure, but as we're recording this, I got to get to work on that right after we finish recording, actually, because voting opens up tomorrow, our time. Oh, but, oh uh, wow. So yeah, that's an ongoing thing to uh, check out my channel, but also lots of cool creators to check out within that series. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, go check out uh, Top 10 Pony videos. Well, it's, it's the first week of every month, so there's always going to be a poll coming up soon. Yep. So... Uh, go vote for that if you haven't yet, and uh, yeah, go watch the previous top ten pony videos and uh, watch watch more pony content creators. Put more <laughs> pony content creators on there, including me. Subscribe to me if you would upload a video, Ambi. Um, I'm literally I'm literally gonna upload one like later today. I will. I will, uh, I will <laughs> like it's plug almost my done. channel, but I'm st- I, I haven't worked on my video yet. <laughs> I've I've yelled at you enough. I, I've been Robert, procrastinating but... <laughs> it. 
that said, I actually do have something to plug for once. Oh, oh, snap. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be out yet uh, by the time this comes out, uh, because it is kind of a big project. But um, uh, me, Laravoon, uh, Coaster, and Stardust42 did a big like uh, review of all the uh, songs in uh, Gen 4 of uh, Friendship is Magic. Oh, dang. Um, like a, a big like tier list thing. So uh, that's going up on Stardust's channel. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description, alongside Little Shies, obviously. Yeah, so go check that out if it's out. I'll link it in the description. If, it, uh, if, if it's not, not out, then you can, you can tell Maynard that he's stupid or something. Yeah, do that. DM me on Discord and say I'm stupid. But that being said, did anyone else have anything they wanted to plug? New video that'll probably be on my channel by the time, or at least, God, I hope it's on my channel by the time this goes live. All right. <laughs> Better be. I guess yeah. I, could, I could just plug littleshyfm.com. Like, you can find all my links there. Yeah. Nice. So we'll put uh we'll put links to all that in the description. Uh thank you guys so much for listening and uh yeah, you guys have a great rest of your couple of weeks. Thanks so much again uh for coming on, little shy. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh you guys have a good one. All right. We'll see you in the next episode, guys. Goodbye.